Hi everyone, welcome to today's tutorial and in this video I will be showing you how you can recreate this 3D polygon logo. It looks a little complicated and it's a little difficult <clears throat> to make this but with if you follow along with the steps you can recreate this and let's dive right in. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new document. So I'll go ahead and do that. <coughs> yeah. So for this video, I will be using this custom size document, which is 1000 by 1000 pixels. And I will be renaming my document to be 3D Polygon Logo. And let's go. Okay. So before I start with that, I would also like to make sure that in the views panel, oops, here in this view, view panel right here, my smart guides has been switched on. Now my smart guides is going to help me a lot to make the make that logo. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is that I will be making a line. And for that, I do not require this fill and I just need the stroke, which is I'm going to use blue for now. And I'm also going to increase the stroke weight from 1 to 2. And over here precisely in the center, I'm just going to go ahead and make this line right here. So you'll see in a moment why we've made this line. Okay. Now what we're going to do is that I'll go ahead back to my rectangle tool right here and this time I'm going to change the stroke to black and I let the stroke weight be 2 as well. So what I'm going to do is that I'll be creating one square. So I'll double, so just click on your document and over here in this panel you have to give the values of the width and the height option. So the first square I'm going to make will have the dimensions of 400 pixels by 400 pixels like that. I'm just going to go ahead and bring it approximately over here. So I'll be go making another rectangle. No, I'm sorry, another square. So I'll be using this rectangle tool again. Bring my mouse here to the center over here, center of my square. And this time, the second square that I'm going to make will have the dimensions of 150 pixels by 150 pixels. Like that. And I'll go ahead and also bring this one over here. Like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that I'll be making four copies of this square inside this bigger square like that, right? So I'll go ahead and select my inner, you know, the second square we just created. Go over here to this blend tool, double click on this. And here in the spacing, I'll be using specified steps. And the specified steps is going to be, you know, going to, is going to be four and okay. So I want four copies of this, four copies of the square inside this bigger square, right? So I'll just select this smaller square and the bigger square like that oops like this and like this and there you go so squares have been made and i'll go ahead and select my bigger square go to object and click on expand click on ok but after after I have expanded my square, all the other squares also get selected, but we don't want that, right? So this is by default that the squares get grouped together. So in order to ungroup them, we'll just right click and click on this ungroup option right here, like that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that I'll be making some lines over here which will be acting as a guide in order to make these kind this kind of a shape right 
So for that, I will be changing my stroke color to red and I let the stroke weight be to itself. So what I'm going to do now is, I'll be using the line segment again and I'll go ahead and make one line going like this and no. So one going on top like that. This one going like this. That. This one going upwards again like this. Right, and just one last one, which is going right below like that. Okay. So these red lines will be acting as a guide to make these type of black shapes. Right. So now we're going to make the, make some circles now. So I'll go back to the rectangle tool and choose the ellipse tool. So I'm going to go ahead and make two circles. So I'll click on my document again. And this time the diameter of the first circle is going to be 75 by 75. And okay. I'm going to go ahead and make another circle. This time, the second circle's diameter is going to be 50 by 50, 50 by 50 pixels. And like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that I'll select this circle and then just bring it here to the center of my bigger circle like that. I'll select these two. I'll zoom in. I'll select... You will be using the direct selection tool and clicking on the bottom anchor, anchor point, this one. Clicking on shift and select the right anchor points as well and go ahead and delete those. Similarly with the smaller circle as well, I'll select the bottom anchor point. Click on shift and select the right anchor point and go ahead and delete those as well. So now these arcs will be used to make our shape. So I have to just place them accordingly. So I'll select this and Bring it here. I'll zoom in on a little bit. Yeah, okay. This one right here. Play till the bottom of this red one. And just extend this a little so that it meets the black square like that. Come back here and just get this one and place it right about here and zoom in so you can see like that. I'll just get this one a little bit more down like this and get this a little bit like that. Okay. So I'll be making another same thing in this side as well. So I'll select this and I'll select this. Select this and select this. Click on Alt to go ahead and make a copy like that over here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this one a little bit more closer like this. 
Similarly, this, that. Okay, so it's starting to take a little shape. So what I'm going to do is I'll select this bigger anchor point. Click on Alt again and bring it approximately over here till the midpoint. Right click on this, go ahead to the transform panel and go to reflect. Okay. And just going to bring it like. Okay, so we've kind of formed our shape. So what I'm going to do now is I'll just select the blue line, go to object, hide, and I'll hide the selection temporarily. I'll select all of them. Go to the shape builder tool. And I'll be choosing my fill to be yellow for now. And I'll go ahead and combine the shapes that we just created. Hmm. Also, just making sure that our lines... Some, yeah, this is a little tedious process to do. Hmm, just bring the anchor point a little down. Yep. Select this just to make sure that the shape builder tool selects this, selects that. Hmm. Yeah, so after your arcs are made like this, so we'll go ahead and select all of them and we're going to go ahead and combine our shapes now. So I'll be using this shape builder tool and I'll be using the fill as yellow for now. So I'll be zooming in and as you can see that the shape builder tool now uh, it now recognizes all these individual shapes, right? So I'll go ahead and then just combine these shapes together like this and this one like that. And I'll be using this one as well. So now that we have added our shapes so now that we have added the colors to our shapes i'm going to go ahead select all of them and object okay so another thing i just have to that is left that I have to do is that I need to also combine this one as well. This red stroke going back to the shape builder tool and just deleting that. No wait. I'm gonna zoom in to see over here. This red stroke is left. I need that. Probably I don't. I don't need that. Oops. Yeah. Let's make sure that everything is like that. Not require that as of now. Okay. So once you get that, I'll select the shape we just made, the yellow ones. Go to object, hide and click on hide selection as of now. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and delete the grid we just made. Go back to object and click on show all. 
So once we get this, I'll just go ahead and also just increase this a little bit like that. I also want to remove the stroke of these lines like that. I'll select this one and I'll go ahead and add a gradient to it. So this gradient adds like a shadow right below the corners here, right? So uh, go ahead and click on this gradient tool right here. I let it be white and black. And what I'm going to do is that I'll select this white one and reduce the opacity to 0%. And this black one right here, I'll reduce that opacity to 50% like this. And you can see that this slight gradient has been made. So you can just go ahead and just add one over here. Select this again. And add again like that. And I do need the stroke, I accidentally removed the stroke of that. And I'll just bring this a little down. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this around. I'm going to rotate this shape along with the shaded portions along this path right here. Right. I'll go ahead, select this. Go to the rotate tool right here. Click on alt and bring this light blue shape over here to this anchor point and change the angle to 90%. Copy like that and click on control D and control D. So you get something like this. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and also just join them together so that it interlocks in a way like this oops okay I'll go ahead and that but like these and bring them upward like this and a bit more underneath like that so now we can just go ahead and delete this line we've just made and select this again go to the path finder panel right here know it i'm just going to select just the shapes we've just made this Go to the Pathfinder panel and click on Unite, like that. Right click and right click and click on Control plus G to group them together. No, wait, I need to group all of them together, right? Group. Once that's done, we can go ahead and also rotate this to 45 degrees like that wait and group I'll select this and I'll change the color to black like that so once that's done we can go ahead and now group them together like this and scale this a little bit more bigger like that so it fits our document like this so once that's done we can go ahead and also save our document in order to do that we'll be going to file going to save as and you can go ahead and save it wherever you want to. So I'll be just saving it here temporarily. Yeah. So by default, you can see that a file name 3D Polygon logo is the same as our document name. And our save as type is going to be Adobe Illustrator as well. 
I highly recommend that we save our file in this format so that in case if I want to make any further changes, I can easily do that by accessing my Adobe Illustrator file and clicking on save and OK. And there you go. Our 3D Polygon logo has now been successfully been saved as an AI file. I hope you found this tutorial to be useful and with a little practice, you can make similar shapes and add different colors to your logo as well. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.